All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR. So this is my first video on camera for the new year. Um, not sure if I remember how to do this uh, because I don't think in December I dropped any videos on camera because you know, December, January, they're kind of like dead months as far as like gaming news and topics and everything like that. Um, not sure if I'm, I remember how to do this, but I'm a freestyle it. We gonna wing it, we gonna figure it out. So this, So since the new year started, Happy New Year, by the way. There's been a few gaming topics that have happened that I wanted to talk about, but I didn't get into the groove of getting on camera yet and talking about these things. So um, in the comment section after this video, uh, please let me know um, what uh, pieces of news that have dropped that you want me to speak about. I've been you know, paying attention uh, to you know, gaming uh, news and everything like that, so I have a few in mind, but please in the, descript in, in the comment section, let me know what you want me to talk about. So let's get to the point of this video. Let's get to the topic. So we're going to talk about Days Gone, um, Jeff Ross, uh, who is the um, who is the director, who was the director uh, at Sony Bend and um, the game director of Days Gone, and John Garvin. I can't remember his exact uh, specific title at, at, at uh, uh, Sony Bend, but he was Jeff Ross's boss. Um, and they've been, especially John Garvin, they've been at Sony Bend for a very long time. I can't remember how long Jeff Ross has been at Sony Bend, but they're like, uh, you know, they've been at, they're, they're uh, you know, um, veterans at Sony Bend, right? Um, and Jeff Ross released a tweet in response to the news that Sony uh, was, uh, was pretty much releasing, you know, and celebrating the sales of Ghost of Tsushima, which hit 8 million, but... Days Gone also hit eight million, um, but uh, local management at Sony Bend pretty much made the studio, you know, Jeff Ross and the rest of his crew, John Garb and everybody else there, made them feel like the like Days Gone was a failure or a disappointment, even though they hit the same milestone as Sucker Punch and uh, Ghost of Tsushima. He wanted to make it very clear he was not shitting on uh, Ghost of Tsushima. He was not shitting on, uh, you know, Sucker Punch as a studio. He's fans of them. He loves that game. He was just confused. You know, it's like if you do something, uh, if you do the same thing that somebody else does and you get, you know, kind of shitted on for it and they celebrate the other person, you're confused. So he wanted closure. He wanted an explanation. That's really what his tweet was. And just to uh, be clear, he this is the tweet he responded to that many... Um, Many uh, publications reported Game Informer said Ghost of Tsushima reaches another fantastic milestone with over 8 million copies sold. Jeff Ross said, at the time I left Sony, Days Gone had been out for a year and a half and, uh, and, and a month and, and sold over 8 million copies. It's since gone on to sell more and then a million on Steam. Local management always made us feel like it was a disappointment. So you could actually, you know, ballpark range. Ghost, uh, Days Gone has sold maybe like 9 million, maybe past that at this point. And they were made, made to feel like, you know, the game was a, was a disappointment. So after, and I was going to make this video last night, but Jeff, uh, uh, not Jeff, um, David Jaffe, who we all know, uh, he's friends with those guys. He's had them on before. So he brought them on to talk about this and they, you know, elaborated a little bit more. They expounded on it. So, and they, they gave a lot, a lot more detail on the situation, which I'm going to mention. So first of all, let me just say how I feel about this. Right. And I've been very vocal about this. I didn't like days gone. I thought days gone was pretty mediocre. I feel like if, and I hate when people use this argument, the if you remove argument, but honestly, if you were, because you could make this case for a lot of games, but if you remove one thing from Days Gone, in my opinion, if you remove that bike, if you remove that motorcycle, Days Gone is the most, is one of the most generic, you know, you know shooters. It's, it's a zombie game, right? It's a zombie shooter. It's a third person zombie game. And obviously, you know, in-house, first party, that already exists, even though the games are different, yes, that technically already exists in-house with The Last of Us. But there's plenty of other zombie shooters on the market, um, you know, such as, you know, war there's literally a World War Z game. I mean, there, there, there's, there's literally, we're not short of zombie shooters. Everybody knows that, right? So you, you remove the bike and it's, and it's like, 
like plenty of other zombie shooters, but I guess you can make the argument that Days Gone has a, you know, a narrative and a story that these other, you know, bunch of zombie shooters wouldn't necessarily give you. Okay, I understand that, right? And I'm I'm of two minds when it comes to Days Gone and a sequel because a lot of people are clamoring for a sequel that, you know, people there are definitely fans of the game. Uh, saying, hey, man, this game is great. It should get a sequel. You know, it sold all these copies and everything like that. Me, I don't want a Days Gone sequel because I wasn't a fan of the game, right? I felt Like I said, I felt it was repetitive, monotonous, boring, um, just just me, a mediocre. It had, it, it had a lot of bugs. And, and, you know, Jeff Ross admitted to that. The game launched very buggy, and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. It had all these issues, right? It was all these issues that I had with it. But the reason I'm of two minds is because I'm someone, and, I, and I'm very vocal about it all the time. I say that or the Order 1886 should get a sequel. And the Order 1886 was flawed, right? But my thing, I think the Order 1886 has a higher ceiling and has more potential than Days Gone. And it feels more of a void conceptually and story-wise that Days Gone doesn't, in, in my opinion. I, I think the Order 1886 is just a very unique game, story-wise, and even like gameplay. A lot of people like really sleep on the Order 1886's gameplay. The gunplay in that game is phenomenal. Some of the best I've ever experienced. I'm talking about gunplay. I'm talking about how guns sound, how guns shoot, how how enemies react when you get hit with that gun. It's extremely visceral and brutal, and I and I absolutely love that. Right, but I, I can't. I understand. I can't necessarily say, oh, I feel like Order 1886 has a lot of potential, so it should get a sequel, um, and Days Gone doesn't, because both of these are are definitely flawed for uh, you know first entries of of new IPs. I get that. So a Days Gone two would probably be leagues better than than the original game, and I would probably like a Days Gone two even though I didn't like Days Gone 1. And even though I have like this OCD thing, I don't like to play sequels if I didn't beat the beat the original game. Um, that's kind of how I am. So I would probably never play, play it for that reason. Got to remove the cat. Um, I would probably never play it for that reason because I just, you know, if I don't beat the first one, I don't like to play the second one. That, I understand that. Like sequels are usually sometimes the chance for, the chance for redemption. Like Uncharted 1, even though Uncharted 1 is a decent game, Uncharted 2 is leagues better. We, you know, we, there's no way we would have known just off playing Uncharted 1 that it would grow to be what it came to be with, even though 3 was bad, you know, this, this big franchise. So 2 is, the sequel is supposed to be room for, you know, it's supposed to be room for improvement, room for growth. And, um, you know, that's, that's what sequels are, that's what sequels are supposed to be. Excuse the cats. Um, so I, I get that premise that, you know, it's supposed to be a, a, a chance for that type of thing. But in my opinion, um, the order 1886 is, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's a much more fixable. It's a much more easy fix than, than a, a, a game like days gone. And I think it, it fills a void um, conceptually than Days Gone, right? Because there were three things wrong with the Order 1886, in my opinion. One, it was too short. Two, it, um, it had those weird, stupid uh, werewolf fighting sections where you're just literally spinning around in a circle, you know, damn near wrestling a, a, a werewolf shooting but you know it, it 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 was very on rails it was i don't know why they designed it like that so those stupid werewolf section and three they had this bad pacing where there were even like literally chapters in that game where there wasn't even actually gameplay it would like essentially be a cutscene. you fix those three easy things and honestly i think if you add multiplayer to that game that game is amazing because that like i said the gunplay is, is phenomenal so I think I just think the order is is unique and I think it's a way more easy fix than Days Gone because one of the problems with Days Gone is the game was too damn long, the scope of the game was too damn big and this is something that Jeff Ross and John Garvin admitted to. Like they had to scale down that game so many times um and it took way too long for them to to uh to even make. They admitted that. And just and I, I want to get into some of the things that, you know, he they talked about in the um in the interview, in the conversation 
with David Jaffe that they did last night. So they admitted that lo it's local management at Sony Ben that made them feel like inadequate and made them feel like the game was a failure. Uh, local management that doesn't mean like you know the the high execs it wasn't like Shuhei Yoshida it wasn't like Andrew House or you know the the new guard which is um Herman Holst or Jim Ryan it wasn't anybody like that it was you know local local management we don't actually you know have the names and he he even mentioned that he pitched he had like a you know a light pitch of to to do like an open world resistance for a next game um he uh he the he uh all Sony also brought up maybe doing this is local management once again maybe doing like a like a siphon bringing back siphon filter doing a siphon a siphon filter game the point was local management just didn't want a days gone to a days gone sequel they did not want days gone to right so he, they admitted the game was buggy as hell he admitted the game the it, it took days gone six years like six seven years to develop. That's way longer than that game was supposed to be. He said it was supposed to be a, a four-year dev cycle, right? And I'm trying to remember the last game. The the re and, and he and he admitted that they uh, um, Ghost of Tsushima was most likely a lot more profitable than Days Gone, right? Because it's not only about selling the same amount of units. You could sell the same amount of units, but one game was more profitable, right? Ghost of Tsushima was probably a lot more profitable. Or maybe not a lot more, but it was probably more profitable. Uh, the game was more favored critically and and um, by players than than Days Gone. So those those things matter, right? You can't just say, "Oh, it's the same." And and he admitted this stuff, right? Because when you look at the the consensus of how people view Ghost of Tsushima, oh, they love it. It's 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 this you know this media darling. Even though it's like what an eighty four on on Metacritic. It's looked at extremely favorably. People just gush about it all the time. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. The gameplay is it's, it's this masterpiece, right? That's how people talk about Ghost of Tsushima. People don't talk about Days Gone the same way. It, it's it's not held in in the same light critically by you know the players, users. It's it's not viewed the same way. People like D Days Gone is not really a conversation still. Like I still people see people on Twitter talking about Ghost of Tsushima every now and then. After like those few months, Days Gone came out. You don't really see people like lushing over it and gushing over it like like that, because it has its fans, but it's not held held in this in the same light as the other Sony first party like games and, and studios. Like this is supposed to be their magnum opus. You like you know how last generation every Sony first party studio released their magnum opus. You know God of War, H Horizon, Sp Spider Man, uh, Last of Us Part Two. All of these games, amazing. Let, let's be real. Sony Bend and, and Days Gone was the runt of the litter. They were the runt. That, that's, that's just how it is. Quality-wise, um, as far as their game goes, you know, just holistically, they were the runt of the litter. Um, the, he did bring up the, the, that there was this rumor, and he wasn't saying it's true, but he heard a rumor that CD Projekt Red was interested in, in buying... Um, the Days Gone IP from Sony. Um, even if that's true, Sony would probably never, never do it. You know, Sony's stubborn like that. Um, but he's but take that with a grain of salt. That's just he. He said that's something that you know he just heard. Uh, he uh, John Garvin did state that you know um, Days Gone is obvious is inspired by you know other games like Daisy. Uh, you know the the show Sons of Anarchy. Um, like I said, he he said he kept reiterating the game was highly flawed. He felt like they had a good foundation, and I said, you know, like I, I I do admit, Days Gone is once again a good foundation for a game. It's just not a. I just don't think it's a good game. I think it's a good foundation for a sequel, um, even though I don't want one because of the concept. Uh, he said the game took way too long. Like I said, it was six a six year development cycle it was supposed to be for the game launched buggy. Um, it probably wasn't as profitable as Ghost. Uh, there was a rumor about Sony Bend uh, becoming a satellite, like a secondary assistant studio to uh, Naughty Dog. He said that that's not true. That wasn't actually happening. What happened was um, after Days Gone released, they didn't, you know, some of the developers didn't, ha some of the staff didn't have anything to do. So they just sent some of the staff who had available, who they had available to help 
uh, to help Naughty Dog with with whatever they were working on, which was probably The Last of Us, uh, which was probably The Last of Us or, you know, what, whatever the hell it was. Um, and John Garvin actually believes that a lot of reviewers didn't actually play the game. And... You know that that's that it's funny because it's something that we say a lot of, a lot around here in this community is like there's a lot of people that talk about games but didn't actually play them, right? Um, and that's something I, I do believe. I'm not gonna. I would like to believe that the vast majority of people who reviewed the game did play it. And when he says play, I think he means actually be, right? I don't think he means they actually turned on the game for a few hours or ten minutes. Um, I'm sure they at least did that, but many of them problem possibly didn't beat the game, but I think I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt that most of them, uh, did beat the game. But here's the thing. If they didn't beat the game, I can't blame them. The game is long as hell for no reason. And I, and, and I've, I've beaten games that are like 50, 60 hours long, but there's a difference between a game that is justifiably 60 hours long and a game that's just clearly too long in the tooth. Like, it's just, there's no reason that this game gives you to be this long. There, there's no reason. It's just long because they put a lot of content, right? Which is really filler. Like, content without a, pur without a purpose is just filler, right? If there's, no, if there's no reason for it, you're just padding the game. I, I, I'm ashamed as to how much time I put in Days Gone. Because usually, you know, my thing is, and the reason I put so much, I think I put like 20 hours into it before I dropped it, and I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed of putting that much time into it. Not, not, I'm not ashamed of dropping, dropping it. The reason I put that much time into it, because it, had, it did have redeeming factors, right? It had a lot of things that I liked that kept me going, and, that, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going until I, you know, I ran into like, okay, this is the final straw. I'm just going to uninstall this game. This is not it, right? Um... So it did have redeeming factors, and that's what kept me going. Because usually, I say all the time, listen, if I don't like a game in two hours, I'm dropping it. But I liked the game for the first two hours. It was like, I feel like it was after the first five hours, it was like, it was it was stop and go, right? It was like real sketchy after the first five hours that I was like, mm. you know, so I made it up to 20 hours, and I was like, yeah, um, wish I had my time back. Um, but that... Seems to be the whole, you know, situation. Those are my thoughts on it. That's what the uh, John Garvin and Jeff Ross explained. Um, I, like I said on Twitter, I think people look at Days Gone a, a, a lot, like a lot like how people look at um, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, right? Where recent events have made people act like this game is a national treasure when it's actually not. And as much as much like, you know, people have been outspoken in support of these games of, of Days Gone, I'm like, I don't really believe most of y'all actually beat this game or really love this game like that. I, I, I don't believe it. I think I think it's a vocal minority that are actually speaking up for Days Gone because L L Sony games, in case you don't know, across the industry, Sony first party games have like the highest completion rating across games, across the industry. Like it's, it's absurd. Like one thing you could say about PlayStation gamers, they beat their games because God of War, God of War, Horizon, Spider-Man, The Last of Us, even with how much people quote unquote hate The Last of Us Part Two, that's the vocal minority. All of those games have like 50% completion rate. Half the people who, who bought the game beat it. Which, if you don't know, is absurd, according to like a the averages, the, you know, the rule of averages and the, and the averages of how how many people beat games. Because God of War, you know, like these games, these like all the games I've named have sold like 10, 15, 20 million plus, right? So the fact that you've gotten like half the people, fifty percent, to beat beat those games is insane. Um, because when you look at other games. Like even the same length, even the same like sales, it's it's like twenty five percent, which is you know still not bad necessarily. If twenty five percent of people beat your game, I, I'll be like that's that's not bad, right? But the industry average seems to be around twenty twenty percent, right? Days Gone is around thirty percent. So the fact that Days Gone's completion rating is 
very it is so far lower than the average PlayStation, uh, the other PlayStation first party games tells you something. It tells you that people didn't a lot of most people didn't actually enjoy this game um, for for what it is. They weren't able to complete it, whether it was because it was too long or they weren't enjoying it. Like Ghost of Tsushima is, you know, a long game. You know, God of War could be a long game, but people the, the, the completion ratings are higher. So that that that's it's indicative of something is what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have that much to say that much else to say about this. I didn't like Days Gone. I'm not crying over this. Um, so I don't I don't want a sequel, even though, yes, I admit the, the sequel will probably be better and I would enjoy it more. I don't want a Days Gone sequel. They did mention something about um, Jeff Ross and John Garvin about they don't think the management at Sony Bend is better since they've left. They don't think like the management is necessarily better. That does, you know, worry me because when it comes to game development, one of the most important factors is management. You could have the most amazing developers if the if the if the guidance and the and the creative direction isn't there and the management isn't great, you're going to get a bad game. And um I'm I'm just worried about like we know they, uh Sony Bend is working on a new game. Uh, we're, we don't know what it is. We don't know anything about it. But I hope that turns out good. I hope um, they learned a lesson from Days Gone, m mostly regarding scope. Because I think, I think if, they, if they cut a lot of things out of Days Gone and, and, they, and they zeroed in and they focused in on certain things, it would have been a much better game. I think if you, if you, if you cut off 15 hours off that game, that game is automatically better. Because then you get to focus on other things, bugs and all and all this and all this other stuff. If you cut out all that filler, that improves the pacing, that that improves the fact that you got time to focus on other stuff. I think that game is automatically like way better. So I think that's what I that's what I hope. Whatever they're, you know, this new team is working on is not like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be this, you know, sprawling, gigantic open world. Like, no, nah, it doesn't have to be all that. So um, yeah, those are my thoughts on this first video back on camera, 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, let me know what y'all think about this. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Make sure you hit the like button. If you enjoyed the video, uh, hit the, uh, notification bell. So you can know anytime I upload a video or go live, follow me on Twitter, you know, hit the join button to support the channel, become a member. And, uh, yeah, catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.